Praise God. Yeah. Bless the reading of the Word of God. Amen. But this morning, we are going to do a refresher course. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you all know everything that I'm about to say, but it's good sometimes to regurgitate or to re energize so that we can stay on track. So, let's talk this morning about our part. <coughs> our part what we need to do to stay in line with God and what God expects us to do because he has already done everything so we want to just again refresh this morning and, and remember and I hope you don't get bored and say oh I heard that before but the scriptures say faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God not by what I heard. So you see, you gotta keep hearing. And sometimes we get complacent. Yeah. And we just take for granted that this is this and this is that. And this is how we get into trouble. You see, because our relationship with Christ can be questioned. It can be questioned based upon what we say. Because we say all the time that you cannot earn salvation but yet there's all of those do's and don'ts out there so what does that mean all of those do's and don'ts and some people get so caught up in the rules and the legality of things till they don't live a Christian life they end up living a religious life Amen. and if you're living a religious life then you've missed the boat you've already missed the boat because a religious life is not a life of Christ. Right. Amen. It is the Christian life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, he says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said that we don't have to be weighted down with a lot of rituals and rules. We can settle for peace and grace because God sent his son and Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross provided a open door to the throne room of God. We can walk into the throne room of God mm -hmm. unhampered. Mm -hmm. Not because of who we are, but not because of what we've done. Because of Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. You see, he did it. He did it. Not anything that we did. Mm -hmm. He did. And this is sometimes where we fall short because we want to do things to prove our worth. We want to do things to show that we're where we're supposed to be. But we can't do anything to better what he's already done. Amen. He's already done. Jesus is our perpetuation for our sins. He is our substitute. He is the one who satisfies the debt that sin brought on the world. Amen. And not just our sin, but sin for the whole world. That's what Jesus does. So you see, what is our part? What must we do? Because he's done everything. Well, I have the official advice or the official suggestion. <laughs> and I, I believe uh, Brother Paul is almost as smart as me. <coughs> <laughs> and I know <laughs> I know somebody's going to say oh come on man <laughs> he nearly as smart as Paul okay then I'll concede I'm not nearly as smart as Paul mm -hmm. but I bet you I'm better looking <laughs> <laughs> but you see I'm trying to stay where God put me Amen. God put us at the top of the list he has never cut us down he's never said anything bad about us 
Amen. So you see, we have to develop this attitude that we are the best. Yeah, amen. How could we be any less than the best if mm -hmm. God sent his son to die for me? There you are. If God Thank sent God. his son to die for me, I'm somebody. Right. Amen. I don't care what anybody else say, I'm Thank somebody. God. So if you tell me, Bill, you you don't look that good, you ugly. Yeah. <laughs> I would simply say. I may be ugly, but I'm so smart, nobody notices. <laughs> I got to be on top, because that's where God plays me. See, and this is the attitude that we need to develop in ourselves, mm -hmm. so that we don't go around cutting ourselves down, because who are we to argue with God? Who are we to argue with God? If God says that we are at the top of the heap, then that's where we should be. He's the one who placed us there. Amen. So don't cut yourself down. Never let anybody down you so far to where you begin to look down at your shoes and start to talk about, uh, I'm not worth anything. Huh? Why are you calling God a lie? God says that you were the best. He Amen. said you are more than conqueror yeah. mm -hmm. right. because yeah. I love you. That's mm -hmm. right. And he proved that by coming to that so that we could build. So let me get back. Mm -hmm. the, the official suggestion is to our part and what we should do comes in the scripture reading this morning in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. He says, sir, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, mm -hmm. that you, you mm -hmm. present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. I plead with you, brother, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice acceptable to God. Yes. Amen. Words, strong words. Present. Present your body. See, Paul says, I plead with you, brother. And that brothering was a strong brothering because. It was literally brothers, brothers, siblings, blood brothers. And he is saying that the, the, the tie or the bond that Christians have with one another brings them into a relationship with Christ that makes them family. That's right. Brothers. That's right. Mm -hmm. Brothers. Mm -hmm. So he is not wanting his brothers to miss it by looking in the wrong areas. And we understand that he believes that these are his brothers because of what Jesus said. Jesus said, when Mary and those other brothers of his took her sons to find Jesus and to talk to him about his behavior, the word was out that Jesus was out there saying a lot of things and he was making the Pharisees and the Sadducees angry. And the word was out that they were going to hurt him. They were going to do something to him. So his mother, being a mother, decided, I better go and stop him and bring him home and, and set him down somewhere before they kill him. But if we remember what Jesus said to Peter when Jesus told Peter that he must go into Jerusalem and be crucified, Amen. Peter said, no, not so. We won't let that happen to you. And Jesus said, Get thee behind me. Yes. 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 You understand yes. what? Mary placed herself in that same position that Peter did by saying, I'm going to go and stop him. But he didn't come down as harsh on his mother as he did with Peter by saying, Get behind me, Satan. You have been yes. infiltrated yes. by the devil because you're trying to stop God's work. Right. But he did say, Who is my mother and my brother? Right. Who is my mother? Now you think a mother standing out in a crowd hearing her son say, who is my mother? Then the reason she's there is justified now because she's saying, this boy is really tired. He's gone over the hill. He don't even know why. <laughs> Asking all of these 
strangers, who is my mother and who is my brother? But Jesus codified that by saying, these are my brothers and my mother. Those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven, they are my mother, my brother, my sister, they are my family. Saying that if you are going against God's word, then you have no part of it. Amen. So you see where Paul is coming from? When he says, I beseech you, my brother, he is saying that we're all in this together. And you are my family. And I don't want you to miss this. That's what he's saying. That we're all in this together. That I beseech you, my brother. So that is our point. When Jesus says, he's pointing out that our bloodline is not as important as our spiritual relationship. Amen. In other words, biology is not as strong as faith. So when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become the children of God. And everybody who makes that oath and takes that step to surrender themselves to Christ becomes children of God. And that means that we're all in this together. We're all brothers. Amen. That's what Paul is trying to say. That we are all brothers. We are family. And if you are not in this game, if you're not in this with us, then you have no part with us. You have no part with us if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, the mercies of God, the forgiveness of God, what God done to put you in a position to be where you are today. Amen. By those mercies, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Present. Present means to make a presentation. It's an action word. To make a presentation mm -hmm. or to, to um, give somebody something. Present. Dedicate. In this instance, of course, it would be surrender or to to just totally submit to the will of God. Amen. That is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. To totally submit to the will of God. And once you submit to the will of God, then you can be a living sacrifice. And that is the only way that you can become a living sacrifice is to totally surrender to God. Mm -hmm. And then you can become a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Not a dead one, but a living one. Not mm -hmm. right. Being on the move, in other words. Yes. Working for the Lord. That's right. Doing God's work. And he mentioned another word in there. He said, holy. 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 You must be holy. All right now. Amen. You All must right. be holy. God said, you be holy, for I am holy. And holy means to be separated, to be yes. cut out of the herd yes. and set apart. For God's use. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To be holy. That's what holy is. Then acceptable means that you're pleasing to God. Yes. You're pleasing to God. And once you've done these things, then that is your reasonable service. Amen. That's your reasonable service. To submit and be holy. <laughs> be acceptable to God. To be used for God's service. Now, that is your reasonable service. Amen. In other words, I like to say it like we would say it. That's the least you could do. Amen. After all that God has done for you, that is the least you can do. And this is what Paul Amen. was saying. After God has shown you all of his grace and mercies and given you everything that he has given you and continues to give you, the least you could do is serve him. Amen. To present your body a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. We need to get that part in there too, you see, because there's he's probably got a warehouse full of dead sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just stuff laying around that's not useful. He wants us to be a living sacrifice, to work for the kingdom, mm -hmm. to be out there. 
So that is a reasonable sentence. And then he goes on to say that we should not be conformed to this world. Not be conformed to this world. Change our system of living. Don't live like the people of the world. See, I told you this was going to be a refresher course because I know you already know all of this stuff. But it's just a reminder. Amen. Just a reminder to, to, to bring us back in line with where God wants us to be and to keep us on track. Don't live according to the world. Change your system of living. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be changed from this system by the renewing of your mind. Amen. By the renewing of your mind. And the only way that you can renew your mind is to go back to where we started, and that is submission. Surrender and submission. Amen. That will put you in a position to renew your mind. Because as long as you're in the world, Amen. then your mind is going to function as the world. Amen. But when you Amen. separate yourself from the world, then you can renew your mind because you have all things anew to. So he says, be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And once you have renewed your mind. And begin to do the work of the Lord. Then you have just presented the proof. That God is seeking. So that you might prove what is that good and perfect will of God. You see, you can talk all you want about anything, and nothing moves or goes no place. But when you begin to do, then the evidence is visible. So you can prove what is that good and perfect will of the Lord by doing that perfect will of God. And the only way you can do that perfect will of God is by complete surrender and the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's asking us to do. So when Paul gives us Romans 1 and 2, he is telling us what we can do to do our part. God has done everything that he needs to do. There is nothing that we can do to change what God has done. He has made us in his image and in his likeness. Now, how much better can you get than to be in the image and likeness of God? That's about as good as you can get. Mm -hmm. But then we begin to stray. And when we begin to stray, we need something to bring us back to mm -hmm. center. Amen. And that is the love of God. Amen. The sacrifice of God. You mm -hmm. see, without the sacrifice of God, mm -hmm. then we're all going left anyway. We, we, mm -hmm. we get, we're going out. Mm -hmm. Because we can't save ourselves. Mm -hmm. Only he can do that. And he's done. Mm -hmm. Great God. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 will say that if you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, if you mm -hmm. have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. you have become a new creature. A new creature. That all of the old stuff that was in you, that you knew about, has passed away and everything becomes new. I hope those words rang in your ears that everything meaning that everything nothing of the old you is left because everything mm -hmm. everything yeah. praise God Amen. the old you is dead and gone mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Everything is new. Everything you see is a new experience for you because you're seeing it through spiritual eyes as opposed to the physical <laughs> eyes you always saw it through. It's the difference between a drunk man and a sober man. When a drunk man sees it, it's moving. <laughs> when a sober man sees it, it is steadfast <laughs> and planned. <laughs> This is how we see it with spiritual eyes. We see it plain and pure through the eyes of God. So all of the old stuff has gone away. So every time you turn towards the old stuff, you're going to hesitate because you know that that's not me anymore. And to think, I used to do that. <laughs> to think, I used to be part of that. Wow. What a difference a day makes. No, what a difference a change is made. Yes. Everything is new for you. And then we come to the Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 where it says that if you're in Christ, there is therefore now, right now, there is therefore now no condemnation. You understand? You are clean. You're clear. You are not condemned for anything because God has absorbed all of your shortcomings. Yes. He's cleaned all of that away. So here you are, pure and perfect. There is therefore now, right now, not yesterday. That's gone and there's nothing else you can do with that. And not tomorrow because you don't know what you're going to do or what's going to come tomorrow. But right now, there is therefore now no condemnation. You are free and clear of everything that you ever thought was going to hinder you from being anything that you wanted to be. Amen. God has taken all of that away. And again, you have direct access into the throne room God. You can stand before God. And God even says to come boldly yes. before the cross. Yes, he did. So you see, you can just bust right in there. You don't yes. have to knock, you know, just bust right into the cross. Yes. And, and cry out. Spill your guts. What, what do you need? What do you want? This is where we have to place ourselves to be what God intended us to be. As we started out, said that this is what God said that we could do. This is not something we earned. This is not something that we signed a contract for. This is what God gave us. Amen. And God has never, ever said anything derogatory or bad about any of us. Check, check your Bible out. Check your Bible. He has never said anything derogatory or bad about it. He simply says, I'll never leave you, nor for sin. You're more than a Come to me. What can separate you from my love? He is giving us hope yes. mm -hmm. because he understands that we are frail and that we need it sometimes. Sometimes we just get into that mood where, oh, poor me, I don't know why the Lord got me. Because we want that attention. We want that, that comfort. <laughs> we are weak and frail. Oh so these are the things that we need to keep going. And he has given us everything that we need. All we need to do is access what he has provided for us. Yes. <laughs> access what he has provided for us. We talked the other day about how God always refers to us as sheep. God and Jesus, in the, in the readings and the writings, they always refer to us as sheep, but then they refer to themselves as shepherds, letting us know that there will never come a time when we have to rely on ourselves. Sheep don't have to do anything but follow the shepherd. Amen. That's what he wants us to know. And we know that. We know that. 
But sometimes again, we become complacent and we take things for granted. So we need these refreshers. Oh, come on, preacher. You're going to preach to me like this is my first time in church. I know that God is love. I know that. Yeah, but you didn't act like it yesterday. You need a refresher. Or you need to, to have it refreshed in your mind to, to rejuvenate your spirit, to give you that, that strength again, to give you that spring in your step, to give you that hope that you know now that I am important and I am a child of God. And being a child of God, nothing can touch me. Amen. I am invincible. I mean, I mean, God loves me more than anything. He has put me at number one on his priority list. Everything that God does is for the people. He doesn't do anything for himself. He does it all for the people. What is your reasonable service? Ah, that's what Paul is talking about. He does everything for us. What is our reason? What is our part? What is our part? Submit yourself. Present your body a living sacrifice. If you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and you pray every day and you go to church every Sunday then you do all the things that you think is right and then go sit in the corner, you have not fulfilled your part of the bargain. All right. You have not fulfilled your part of the bargain. He says that he needs us to go into all the world and to teach people because however you got here this morning, you can bring somebody else. But if you don't tell them, they never will know. All right. Mm -hmm. We sing a song at the end of every service, and we're about to sing it by now. Mm -hmm. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. There's a purpose. For having that light. Because it is what you saw that brought you to where you are today. You may have been eavesdropping on somebody else's conversation and heard somebody talking about God. And said, wow, that sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to check that out. But you were meant to hear it. Amen. Right. Eavesdropping is bad, but you meant to, <laughs> was meant to hear that one. Oh, somebody may have spoke to you or however you got it it was that time and now it is your time and this is what Paul is informing us of mm -hmm. this is what he's trying to tell us to do to present our bodies a living sacrifice mm. which is holy mm -hmm. A holy body that is acceptable to God. A body that God can use. God puts the same value on every body, but there are bodies that He just can't use. He puts the same value on, but He can't use them. This is the God we serve. I'm pointing out that Jesus points out that when we come to him, we become a family member. And a family member will lift up other family members. Amen. So be that living body. Be that living body. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get your mind right so that you can be a force, so that you can be influential, so that you can be contagious, if you will. People want to hear what you got to say because they like the way you're handling things. This guy is always doing thus and so, so let me pay attention to him. He's got something I need to know. 
and you can lay it out to them. Did you know? I know you know, but that's the way you start some sentences. Did you know that there are people out there making millions of dollars a year mm -hmm. being motivational speakers? Yeah. They get paid handsomely mm -hmm. for standing up, telling people how they can be better. But we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't have to go to those seminars. But you know what we could be? We could be the speaker of those seminars and save somebody the money from having to go to those seminars by telling them what we know. Amen. By just telling them what we know. And we know who the supplier of all things are. God. Yes. God. Is the provider. Amen. So I hope I didn't bore you to death. Mm -hmm. I hope that I reminded you of who you are. And I hope that somebody will, will give you an opportunity to tell them who you are so that you can explain to them how they can be like you. When they tell you how short you are in one area. Well, you know, everybody can do that better than you. Yeah, but they can't stand up as straight as I can. We <laughs> <laughs> gotta be the best at something. Because that's where God put I am good at something. Because God made me. God gave me the ability to be the best. Saved me for this very purpose. Just to show you how straight you should stand. That's the message you can carry. And God gave you the ability to be the best that you can be. Never put yourself down because he never will. Amen. But he will always lift you up. You can't get so dirty that God won't come and put his arms around you. You can't get that dirty. You can't make him not love you. You can't make him say anything bad about you. He loves you unconditionally. So love yourself the same way. If you don't love you, I don't expect you don't care too much about me. So you have to love yourself so you can love others. Amen. So cling to God and follow his word. You are God's best. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he wants you to know. You are his best. So whatever condition you're in, whatever situation you're in, where, wherever you are in life, you're God's best. He proved it to you. Sent his son so that you could be here to be whatever you are. So stand on his word and on his presence. Yes. Not what you think. Not what anybody else thinks. But what he thinks. He is the ultimate judge. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for loving us. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would give us the boldness to stand on your promises and on your premises. Father, we ask that you would give us an opportunity to show our neighbors, to show our, our friends, our family, our loved ones, Father, who we are in you. And we pray, Father, that that would give us an opportunity to share your word and your ways with them. Help us, Father, to be the best that we can be. Help us to stand tall, strong, and never back down from any opportunity to share your word with those we come in contact with. We just thank you, Father, for being part of your family. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you bring us together with people of like minds so that we might encourage one another. We ask again, Father, in the name of Jesus, for those healing hands of mercy to reach down, touch those who are sick or injured, Father, and heal them in the name of Jesus. Bless us with your presence throughout our walk this week, Father, and bring us back so that we can rejuvenate and re-energize 
and be strong in you. We thank you again for all that you are. We thank you for what you've done. And we thank you most of all for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. amen.